time for to to start. Welcome to this session AC2 automatic control and this time for the first presentation which is uh, from Juan Alejandro Flores Campos. Then please share your presentation in order to to begin. The time for presentation is 20 minutes including uh, questions so uh, around uh, 15 minutes for the for the presentation. So please uh, share your presentation, Juan Alejandro. Then the, for the first presentation, robust control of linear systems. I mean, max reinforcement learning formulation. Uh, go ahead, please. Uh, is, uh, this article is very mathematical. Uh, it's uh, based on uh, many demonstrations uh, and using the uh, talk about the robot control of linear systems, basically, uh, mean, max, mean max reinforcement learning formulation. My name is Juan Alejandro Perez Campos, and my colleague is Adolfo Perrusquia. He's in, in the Cranfield University. Okay. And how can I change the purpose? I can. Wait, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, there is a problem definition. Uh, it's basically uh, we consider the following perturbed linear systems with uh, with uh, omega is the perturbation coupled to the motor. Then uh, this disturbance is a vector bounded with a set of admissible disturbance omega. It's a vector uh, index mm, dimension m, and uh, omega is a not upper bound of the external disturbance. Then we know also the dynamical system that does mean that the matrices A and B are known. Uh, the condition initial is for T equal to zero seconds. Then in a standard zero sum gain formulation, the control objective is to optimize the following cost function. This function uh, has the uh, matrices S and matrices R that uh, weight up the space and the control input and a penalization W with the gamma uh, quadrat. The matrices uh, um, has the following property, properties and 
Uh, gamma is defined positive if uh, represented the weight matrix of the cost. Then the optimal cost is the one of the satisfied the following zero sum differential gain. That means that we have to to that to solve this equation. We uh, use the theory gain or gain theory uh, that consists in find the minimum control at the maximum perturbation, the uncertainty. Then uh, this hot uh, asterisk. Uh, substitute uh, this this equation. Uh, the then is to solve this uh, optimization problem uh, called in this form because we're going to find the minimum uh, requires the solution of the following Hamilton, Jacobi, Belmont, Isaacs equation. Uh, this have the gradient of the function. This is the dynamics. And this is the uh, the control uh, establishing to be equal to zero. Then uh, H is the Hamilton, and the gradient uh, is the is form and uh, is the partial derivative of the uh, function or the cost function, the state of the system. Then the partial derivative of the state control and penalization to find the mean and max. Uh, of this equation. Uh, this equation also have the this form, algebraic form, uh, that uh, gives the equal solution. Then when uh, we solve the function, uh, we have a uh, two solution. The first one is the uh, control input and the work uh, perturbated uh, Uncertainty. That's a mean that with this uh, formulation or uh, control log, we can uh, find the work case uncertainty and stabilization the the system. Here is important to mention it, that we cannot guarantee that the real disturbance uh, fulfills the work case space, and we want to. The stabilization, the stabilization the system with this kind of perturbation. Here, uh, then, uh, one of the main problems arise by assuming that the real disturbance will fit the work case uncertainty. Okay, in in the the in other words, the value of the work case uncertainty is based on the values of the proposed matrices S, R, and gamma. If the different weight matrices give different work case uncertainties, omega asterisks, which do not necessarily cover the real world disturbance, omega. In this scenario, we need to test different weight matrices to ensure the optimal control is capable to compensate the disturbance, omega. This procedure is time consuming and is not efficient. Uh, this is a, a, of the problem conventional. And uh, we have many opportunities to improve, improve to solution this kind of problem. And the main result we have is to deal with the problem previous session. We take a step back and work with a restricted H2. Then we change the, the cost function uh, with this value function that is more simplified and this term is have the the next form and we take out the penalization term if we want to solve a similar to robust control problem but with the upper real perturbation included then this uh, hamiltonian equation uh, has included the term uh, depends the state and the input control. Uh, the gradient of UV is the optimal value function, is defined by this function, where uh, one more time, we uh, want to uh, find out the minimum control with the maximum uh, perturbation. It's an integral. 
Uh, the main contribution then is to uh, satisfy the following restricted Hamilton Jacobi Bellman with these signals and uh, include, include, included the input control and the world uh, perturbated case with the term uh, in function of control is a relational relational the uh, perturbate. The above mid max formulation defines a robustified version of the Hamilton Jacobi Bell man where the real distribution 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 has been incorporated into the solution. In other hand, the uh, restricted Hamilton Jacobi Bellman adapts the optimal controller to compensate the real uncertainty omega with the set of admissible disturbance omega to ensure near optimal and robust performance. That's important to see that uh, this uh, uh, per, uh, uncertainty is uh, uh, less than equal to the magnitude and less than equal to the admissible perturbation. We need first to determine first the work case uncertainty under the constrained scenario, considering only the terms associated to omega in the question 10, we obtain the following equation. If you see, uh, we change the vector expression in a product inner inner product that gives us a scalar number that this in, uh, allows to compare and simplify the solution of the problem. Then uh, using the cautious chart inequality, uh, we uh, obtain this equation, this expression, and to is used to determine the work case uncertainty. By considering only the equality part, the work case uncertainty uh, omega estrella the star is given by this, this expression. Okay, uh, we uh, when we calculate or need to calculate this perturbation, we mm, it's necessary to add one because uh, avoid indetermination. Then the solution uh, are between mm, minus one or minus one to plus one. Aquí this tau uh, represent the uh, the velocity of converge the, uh, to the solution. The robust control policy then which is obtained by differentiating the Hamiltonian in the equation that with respect to who. Then this, this expression is important for, for the next uh, manipulation, algebraic, algebraic manipulation. In general, the solution of the restricted hamilton jacobi bellman equation cannot be obtained in closed form due to the uh, tired not linear form. And then uh, we obtain to propose a Hussein Repoin segment learning the, uh, at the first stage. To solve, uh, approximate the solution uh, for the restrict Hamilton Jacobi Bellman is given using a neural reinforcement learning model let the optimal value function be equivalent to approximate to this equation. The first one is positive the fifth kernel matrix and the vector of activation function and weights of the neural network. This is an, a residual error uh, because how we try to approximate always be an, a little error. It's complicated to disappear or to be zero. Approximation the solution, uh, uh, some comments important uh, before to continue is one and one day on the one hand, the first element of the right hand side of the quality 20 question, then it's a pre solution of the restriction optimization problem. On the other hand, the second term is designing to learn from the integration using a neural reinforcement learning approximation. The combination of these terms helps to design a robust control that is capable to stabilize 
the linear system and compensate external disturbance and model. Then this equation is uh, as a function as is important. Uh, we construct the uh, product of two functions uh, like uh, linear uh, linearization in terms of the dynamic parameters, uh, called linear uh, regressor, linear regressor, and uh, where theta uh, are the weights of the neural network, and this P is the estimate of the kernel matrix. Then the solution, uh, before we uh, apply uh, some manipulation, algebraic manipulation, we obtain this uh, new control and the obtain the worst case perturbation. Then this uh, symbol indicates that we estimate the parameters. Okay, uh, the simulation results is uh, in the section the effectiveness of the proposed mean matrix of function learning formulation is verified by the following cases. Study, we consider the aircraft F16 because it's a, a common plan, very well known. And uh, uh, the matrix A and matrix B are known, and we include the um, perturbation. If, if you see uh, this perturbation is the lowest, the uh, worst perturbation. Then in this paper, several weighted matrices are tested until the best performance is achieved. The final weighted matrices are set to S50, uh, the identity matrix and R equal one. We compare three different approach. LQR, synchronous in neuronal reinforcer learning, and the proposed min max reinforcer learning. And to control object, the control object is to stabilize the aircraft dynamics at the origin. The sub kernel solution of the LQR is this the, the first uh, result, simulation result. And uh, then uh, we uh, propose the same basis function uh, in the quadratic forms are considered in the uh, synchronous neuronal reinforcement and learning. And we use a learning rate uh, alpha equal to 52, which is the one of the 10 better results without a stabilization the gradient algorithm. The final kernel solution using a synchronous neuronal uh, is a uh, is this now uh, is the graphic uh, the mean max uh, reinforcement learning uh, we propose seven basic functions to improve the convergence of the parameters then uh, uh, after a uh, two hundred Seconds, we uh, find this uh, matrix with these values, and uh, the parameters convert to the following values in um, theta 7, uh, 7.8. So each control policy is given by uh, the LQR, the synchronous neuronal reinforcement alignment, and our proposal. Uh, in, in this figure, we can show, uh, we, we can see how the states are uh, um, this minimum, uh, minimizing the perturbations. Then, because it's a senoidal function uh, in the first stage of the simulation, uh, we propose in the next experiments uh, take out the perturbation and uh, after use um, this kind of perturbation, uh, cosine and sin, the function. Then if we can see uh, our proposed minimize and attenuation the stabilization, 
on the system. In computers is important in this paper, uh, the design of robust controller for linear system is formulated in terms of a min-max reinforcement learning approach. The proposed approach bridge the optimal and robust control theory by restricting both the, pol the control policy and the work case uncertainty into admissible set instead of consider the whole vector space. This uh, this uh, important result because uh, the time consuming is short. A restrictive uh, hamilton jacobi bellman equation is designed in a mid-max form which facilitates the incorporation of the external disturbance in the robust control design. Lapuno stability theory is used to assess the stability and boundedness of the proposal formulation. And finally, a neuronal reinforcement learning algorithm is used as the main tool to estimate the optimal parameters values associated to the optimal cost. The results shown improving in the disturbance attenuation while maintaining a robust performance. This is, a, this is all the presentation. I hope that it's uh, not confusing. Uh, this article is very mathematical, um, but uh, we have we happy because this is a, a interesting tool that we can use in, in other uh, mechanical systems. Uh, and that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now uh, there is time for one, two short questions. Then uh, someone have a question. Even the people in the virtual assistance, you can type in the chat your questions. No question. So um, I, I have a, a little question. What is your the, the main advantage and the main disadvantage of this approach in comparison to 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 others? Okay, the the it's a good question. Uh, the first advantage is uh, this event is that uh, we 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 need to. Trace the number of uh, function, uh, basic function, to improve the, the to obtain the the kernel, the kernel uh, solution. This is the first uh, the advantage. The uh, um, and the good uh, tip or advantage is that uh, we can. A stability search the if you see in this diapositive, uh, this is the, the the maximum the upper limit of the perturbation, uh, 0 0.19, and we prove the our approach with 0 0.2. That means that the stabilization uh, doesn't lose. This is the, the advantage. We that means that we can propose a uh, disturbance, avoid the work case disturbance. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, now it's time for the second presentation. Is in the room um, Arturo Govea. Please uh, share share your presentation. Guerra. Some of the authors are here. Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead, please. So you can to be uh, in calm. <laughs> we have some yeah. minutes in addition, so no problem for that. But I 
try to okay. to respect the, the time 15 minutes around so okay. go ahead thank you so much good afternoon any afternoon um i present uh, this paper another person about the differentiation this talk and this author that's me Lorenz oliva and rafael martinez from from automatic control department the outline the outline of this talk um, take four points introduction numerical results numerical uh, simulation and conclusion the introduction it's really briefly because person that can is is really large and and uh, moreover uh, the estimation of the pressure of the derivatives also is a, a large topic around the uh, charging control. So we can start. Mm -hmm. The fractional calculus is a generalization of the ordinary calculus. We take the operator's derivative and integral and put the um, ordinary, sorry, um, the ordinary orders take a fractional orders. There are several definitions about the, um, the, the fractional order derivative. Several, each several definition, each definition takes a propose, a specific propose in the, in different areas of science. For example, the Caputo fractional order derivative in a point of view of application is the best fractional order derivative because uh, they have a um, some advantage. For example, um, if we calculate, if we have to calculate uh, uh, the fractional of the derivative of Caputo, uh, in Caputo sense of a function constant, it's zero equal to integer or the derivative. And the other, but if we consider um, a fractional, a differential, a differential equation with Caputo operators, the initial condition have the same meaning equal to each order. It means, for example, if we consider a, a mathematical model of a pendulum, we have we take the initial condition like a angular position and velocity position, velocity and position. In Caputo fractional order, the meaning of the physical system is not is not clear. It's not. Uh, Tangible. So the initial condition, yeah. The other part, the estimation, the estimation of the fraction or the derivative, if we consider a signal whose structure is unknown, it's practically possible to uh, uh, obtain an analytical expression and um, of each fraction or the derivative, regardless of the type of derivative involved. There are different methods that deal with this estimation of fractional order derivative of a non signal. This method proposed uh, is in continuous time and discrete time differentiation. But what happens if we if we take a unknown signal with its group by noise? At this moment, there are, there are a few results that deal with this problem. And as far as we know, most of the previous works consider the Riemann Liouville fractional derivative. And, and so the question is how to obtain a fractional local derivative in Caputo sense for a non noisy signal. This is the um, main um, objective of this talk. So let us consider a non bounded signal. Which is represented by eta. Eta is a bar and bar phi. Eta is a noise free signal and bar phi is a noise. We have a remark, necessary remark. The noise free signal has is a bond and admits and leads second bonded, bonded second continuous derivative. Meanwhile, the noise bar phi is bonded and integral in the sense of convergence in the square. So we can consider the following fractional order system given by this structure is a well-known structure. Now that pay 
have a pay structure. So we have a gain, correction error, and zeta. Zeta is the integral part of the correction error. We take the um, rational order between zero and one, and we represent the Caputo operator, operator like this. Beta hat and zeta uh, should be C1 function, L1 and L2, the gains L1 and L2 positive with the initial condition beta 0 and zeta 0. So let's define the following error variables E1, E2. So we can see E2. E2 is the derivative of eta minus. Minus is theta. So we we take the the dynamics, the fraction order the dynamics of three in the following matrix form. Obviously, including the term the the unknown noisy signal. We have the following structure with the following matrix, and particular these. Uh, operator is the sequential person order operator. We take this from for this structure we can consider a perturbed rational order system. Then um, there are uh, some results about the stability of the fractional order system. But by my opinion, several of these results are false, and uh, some take an um, error involved around the mathematical um, situation. But the globally Mita Gleffler um, found in this approach should we take a, a, a correct way around the stability. So we can state the following result theorem if we if there exists a symmetric positive definite matrix uh, P and positive constant mu1, mu2, and mu3, such that the following LMI uh, as is possible, the solution trajectories of the error system for are globally beta clever bounded. Moreover, they converge and hold in the compass and the compass set defined by C1. C1 has the following form uh, with the following condition. It should be proof. It's, it's really mathematical for proof, but we try to explain and, and in a simple form. Take a probably corrective form, uh, which is radially unbounded, and take the zero um, mapping to zero. The rational order for, for A along the trajectories of four has the following uh, structure representing nine. Bear in mind that. P is a scalar. That's why we can take the transposos P equals to P, to bar P. After some algebraic manipulation of this, uh, and the LMI is satisfied, we take the fractional order derivative of functional. Um, so this functional has the same inequality, which leads to this structure. 11 is the structure to propose a globally metallic layer approach. And therefore, the solution directories of the error system for are globally metallic function. And the functional A satisfies the well known rally risk inequality. That's why we can obtain these compact sets where, I repeat, they come the solution trajectories of four converge and hold in this set. So we can take the following remark. The compass set is centered in the origin. So E1, E2 approach the origin, which implies that eta hat approach eta far and theta approach the derivative order, the fraction order derivative of beta bar. So this is not necessary to know the distribution of the noise. It's a better one. The matrix L1 is Hurwitz for all int 1 and int 2. 
still large as the, this form. And the natural question is how to choose mu1, mu2, and mu3. We can see this compact set. Mu2 and mu3 apply directly in the size of the compact set, and mu1 is inversely proportional. So we can increase mu1 as far as LMI as feasible. So we we take this constant mu1, mu2, and mu3 like um, freedom. Um, yeah, constant which can assign before. Before we take this instruction, the numerical simulation, we consider a condensing that which is corrupt one with bonded noise, eta, and a simple sinus, my bar from A is 2, omega is 0.5, and bar. Uh, rho is a zero mean white Gaussian noise with signal to noise ratio uh, 20 dB. It's clear that the noise free signal is only the sinus. The signal we can see in this graphic, um, the dot line is the noise free signal, and the orange line represents the noise signal, the noisy signal. The analytical expression of Caputo fractional derivative of this signal, this uh, noise free signal, is given in uh, equation 14. Wait for simulation, only take this alpha. Consider now consider the following fractional order differentiation, which can is proposed and uh, demonstrate um, the solution trajectory are globally with the type function with no initial condition. In the noise, we can take two cases. We noise free case and noisy case. For, for noise free case, we select L1 with this value, L2 with this value, mu, mu1, mu2, and mu3 with this value, which leads this P. This matrix is the solution of the LMI, of this LMI. So for the now, in this case, we take these constants and take the solution for the same element. In numerical results, this graphic represents in the noise free case, take eta bar and it estimates eta hat and the fractional order derivative and it estimates theta. As we can see, the converge is in a really short time, really, really short time. Moreover, we can re reduce the effect of the noise in the original ether. In the noise case, we can see in the very way, when this occurs again, it converges in the a really short time. For example, it's um, over zero and one second. And in the uh, noise case, we can reduce the effect in the signal which is correct with the noise. We have in these graphics the errors, the absolute errors in both cases. And again, um, as can be seen in figure two and A and B, in the noise free case, the differentiation of the 15 represent a high efficiency and accuracy. Also, also the estimation is achieved in a very short time. On the other hand, in the errors, shows that the absolute errors are small and demonstrate this remains bounded, really bounded. In the case of noise, the differentiation uh, 15 maintains its effectiveness, effectiveness and accuracy, and as demonstrated, it's robust against noise. Once again, in the short time, estimation time, and the error remains bounded. Finally, the conclusion of this work, we present a fractional order differentiation, which allow to estimate the Caputo fractional order derivative of a now of the signal, noisy signal. This structure doesn't require the now the structure of the given signal and its robots against noise. The construction of this differentiation is based on a simple proportional integral fractional order. It's really, really simple. Uh, so its implementation is practical, practically. 
the stabilization and the stability analysis of all the different structure was analyzed using the global metal effect boundaries. This approach is really, really um, new topic along the fractional calculus applied to the theory control. And that's all. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you, presentation, Lawrence. Uh, no have time. We have time for some questions. Some somebody in the room have questions in the virtual session. Also, you can type your questions in the chat. So please go ahead, Felipe Ramirez. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, thank you. So in, in the in the simulation and the proposed method uh, the the kind of of noise uh, is relevant for your for your uh, differentiator in, in the case of if you put a, if you test your your scheme with a high high frequency noise uh, could be uh, could be could be a little bit uh, good, or uh, if you put uh, of the in the other hand, if you had a a, a low uh, noise, uh, the 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 scheme is not good. Uh, okay, I understand. Uh, so we don't explain how to with the type of the noise, but in the remark one, the only uh, consideration that is the noise is abundant and integral in the sense of convergence in the V square. So the structure of the noise, uh, it means that um, Laplace distribution, Gaussian distribution, cosine distribution, that is not important. The important is that the noise uh, must be bounded and integral in the sense of convergence in mean the square. So in the proof of the theorem, and we can now put in this pre presentation, but um, this bound affects directly in the compact set here. Uh, bar P12 is the is exactly this bound, which is necessary for the uh, size of the compact set. If we consider if we consider a uh, noise with a uh, large bone or in uh, high frequency, uh, the compact set and uh, the size of the compact set uh, should be increased or decreased. But the mu two, mu three, and mu one um, um, produce that the LMI should be feasible and increase the size of the compact set. So the distribution of the noise, and uh, there is not important, but the really, really important is this remark. The noise should must be uh, bounded and integral in the sense of convergence in mean the square. Oh, thank you. Uh, and and I have an uh, other question. Uh, so the the bounded uh, the value of the bounding of, of the noise must be no or only it is assumed that that is bounded and you you put your scheme. Or it is necessary to be bound to be uh, known the value of the bond. No, the value of the bond is is not important. We only need that it is bonded, but we don't important the value of this bond side. Because uh, uh, again, this compact set, we have a lot of uh, freedom constant. Uh, moreover. The uh, matrix P, which is the solution of this LMI, allows of the compact of the set. But it is not necessary to know the value of these uh, bones. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question and the answers. So, uh, uh, is there another question? Uh, question. Another question? No more. OK, uh, thank you very much, Lawrence. Uh, we are going to move to the next presentation now. Uh, yeah.
basic sur source estimation. So Pablo, go ahead. Thank you very much. Can you see my, my screen? We can see. Okay, thank you so much. So this is Pablo de Villero speaking. I'm a PhD student from Simbestab Guadalajara and uh, UPHF in France. And today I'm going to present part of my work during my, my PhD titled Distributed Predefined Time Optimization for Basic Source Estimation. So uh, multi-agent systems is a, a very trendy topic in control engineering at this moment due to the advancements in digital systems, communications, and sensing devices. Uh, in this context, an agent can be considered as an intelligent entity which has decision-making capabilities and all the agents in the system interact to, to pursue uh, a particular common objective. If this objective is, is concerned with the minimization of local functions that are private to each agent, we are talking about distributed optimization. Uh, this approach has been used in many applications. For example, for smart grids in machine learning, social networks, and very recently for AGVs and robotic systems in general. Okay, now some preliminaries to understand um, what we were uh, working on. So imagine you have a suitable Lyapunov function for the system, and then the depending on the convergence of the of the equilibrium, we can classify this uh, convergence in three types. The first one is asymptotic convergence, which is the very typical one we use for, for our analysis. But when time is a hard constraint, this is very inadequate. Uh, there's another approach called finite time convergence, in which the upper bound of the settling time is finite, but it depends on the initial conditions. Uh, finally, we have fixed time convergence in which the upper bound of the settling time is independent of the initial conditions. But uh, the relationship between this upper bound and the parameters of the system is not explicit. It's not explicit enough. So there's a, a new approach called predefined time, which is an enhancement to this fixed time convergence in which the upper bound of the settling time is a user defined parameter, meaning that we can um, establish an upper bound in advance. Okay, uh, about graph theory, um, some of you have uh, spoken about that. Uh, about this, so I'm going to be very quick. Let's say we have a graph chi that is composed of nodes or vertices, or in this case, agents. Um, the connection between these nodes uh, is called uh, edges, and these edges are represented by a square matrix that we call a adjacency matrix. Uh, an undirected connected graph is, uh, we have a, an undirected connected graph is all, if all edges are bidirectional, and if there exists at least one path between any two vertices. Another way of expressing the connection, the connection between agents is the Laplacian matrix. Some of you have talked about that. Uh, it's defined as you may see on the left. On the right hand of your screen, you may see a very simple example where we have four agents. Uh, that graph is uh, undirected and connected. And we have the adjacency matrix and the Laplacian matrix. When we have undirected connected graphs, this Laplacian matrix is symmetric. The first eigenvalue, as someone mentioned before, is zero. And the second small enough, smallest eigenvalue, which in some texts are, is called Fiedler eigenvalue, is directly related to the connectivity of the, of the network. Finally, about convex analysis, we have a, a twice differentiable function, and we consider it strongly convex if it holds those two conditions. 
if we, if this function is strongly convex, we can guarantee that there's a unique optimum. Analogously, if a twice differentiable function is smooth, theta smooth, um, we can guarantee that uh, its gradient and Hessian is Lipschitz continuous. So pay attention to these two concepts because I, I will talk about them later. Now let's go, let's move to the problem formulation. Imagine you deploy some sensors around a particular area um, and there are some agents in the surroundings. Now, there's a source of a particular kind, let's say a noise source or a pollution source, heat source, etc. And we're going to consider it isotropic. Some of the sensors that were deployed in the area get active, and after that they send information to the to the agents. The agents uh, communicate among them, not all of them, but with the with their neighbors, and with that information they move to the estimated location of the source. I want to emphasize that this is the estimated location of the source, because depending on the position of the sensors and the connection between sensors and agents, it could be a little deviated, but uh, maybe the, the agents have some uh, onboard sensors that are capable to bring them to the precise location of the source. So this is just an approximation. We can translate that in a mathematical form. Let's consider a first order system and the agents uh, have a first order dynamics. And the idea is to minimize, as I told you before, the sum of the local functions. And we define the local functions, uh, as you may see here, it's a quadratic form in which we have the difference or the distance between the position of the agent and the position of this activated or active sensors. Uh, to the uh, connected to the particular agent. As you saw before, maybe an agent has the possibility to connect to several sensors. So we have here a parameter DIK that is one if the agent I has access to the sensor K or zero otherwise. Now the constraint. The constraint is concerned with the, the convergence to the, to the global minimum and under this, um, uh, this structure, the global minimum is the estimated location of the source. So the idea is that the agents converge uh, or perform consensus to that point in a time less than TC. TC is the upper bound of the settling time. Now, if we may want agents to adopt a particular formation so we can change that position uh, to a displacement just uh, by uh, introducing this PI, which is the, the state of the agent minus a fixed offset that is established by the user. In this way, we can, agents can adopt a, a formation around that estimated uh, location of the source. We need two assumptions. The first one, of course, the communication topology is described by a fixed, connected, and directed graph. And the second assumption um, is that the local functions are twice differentiable, small theta strongly convex, and big theta smooth. And as you may see, this is a quadratic um, function, so it meets both conditions. Here are the results. Is the, um, the algorithm we developed. It's a two-step algorithm. Allow me to start explaining the second part of the algorithm. As you may see, we have here a sum over the neighbors of the on the neighbor network. So this this second part of the algorithm is concerned to bringing the agents to the global minimum. This symbol here is the uh, vectorial signal function. Um, so why do we need a first step, a prior step? Our our algorithm is based on the zero gradient sum theory for those of you who knows it. Uh, and in order to, to work, 
the agents must uh, must start at their initial uh, at their local minimums, which is a very restrict restrictive condition and it's impractical. So we have to add a first step in which uh, every agent individually goes to their local minimum and from there they perform a communication, they start communicating themselves and perform a consensus or formation. Uh, the rest are just constants, but I want to bring attention to this last constant C3. C3, uh, it's, um, it depends on the of theta bar. This theta bar is the maximum among, among all the, the smooth parameters and lambda 2, which I explained before. So as long as the C3 parameter is higher than or equal to this fraction, we can guarantee that the agents will converge uh, in predefined time TC. One last thing. Um, since we have two steps, we introduce this parameter uh, mu, which uh, is just for the to establish the duration of either phase or either step. So it goes from zero to one. Okay. Um, the proof of the stability is quite long, so I I invite you all to to read our paper later. But I want to, to talk very briefly about um, the Lyapunov functions we used for this algorithm. For the first step, we used a pretty common Lyapunov function, which is the square norm of the gradient, which is positive, radially unbounded, and equal to zero if and only if the gradient is zero, meaning that the agents achieve their local minimum, right? But look at the, the right-hand side equation. This is quite uncommon, at least for most of us. Uh, it's not the, the typical Lyapunov function, but if you remember, we saw earlier um, an expression for uh, strongly convex functions. So this is pretty similar. And we can guarantee that this, this um, Lyapunov function is a suitable Lyapunov function because it's, it is positive, it is radially unbounded, and it's equal to zero if and only if the displacement of every agent is equal to the global minimum. Okay, here goes the simulations. Uh, we have, um, for this example, five agents with first order dynamics, I insist. Um, according to this topology, the lambda two parameter is 0 0.38. And we have this accessibility matrix, which says, uh, the sensors which are connected to to the to the agents. For example, the first row uh, says that agent one is connected to sensor one and sensor two. The last row says that agent five is connected to uh, sensor four, etc. So on the left, uh, we have pure consensus. So we establish the displacement, the offset equal to zero, and we establish a predefined time forty. So let's see. So the agents first visit the local minimum and then they go and perform consensus to the estimated global minimum in less than 40 seconds or 40 units of time to be to be precise. On the right, we apply a displacement for every agent. So they will adopt, adopt a formation, a pentagon embedded in a circle of radius 0.4. Let's see how it goes. So they first visit their local minimum, and then they adopt the formation around the estimated location of the source in less than 40, 40 units of time. These are uh, 2D plots, but it's uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, on the top of, of your screen, you see the three coordinates because it's, uh, it's three coordinates, <laughs> but uh, in, in, in terms of the time. So you may see that Agents first go to the uh, local minimum and then they perform consensus to the global minimum in less than 40 units of time. And the last figure uh, shows the behavior of the control input, the norm of the control input. Okay, uh, so conclusions and future work. So the, our proposed algorithm can be used for both 
formation and consensus control. The optimization can, time can be assigned arbitrarily. Uh, and this third con, uh, conclusion is very important. Agents do not need to share the local functions or gradients or hessians. Uh, so it is indeed an, a distributed uh, scheme. And this will contribute to the reduction of the communication burden and preserve privacy. For future work, we are planning on relaxing the strongly convex condition, applying uh, event triggering control um, to include equality and inequality constraints and the applicability on directed graphs. So this is it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, I'm pleased to, to answer all of them. Thank you, Pablo, for your presentation. So we have time for questions. Someone have a has a question, a question in the room. Please express. It's time for questions. Go ahead. So in a in a practical situation, what is the the control, the the, the input control? Yeah, let me show you again. You still can see my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see. Let me go back. This is it. It's a two step control input. Yeah, and in a. In a practical situation, that means in a physics equipment. Uh, I don't know uh, the, the physics. What what is the the input control? Is an electrical signal? Uh, what? Okay, okay. Um, since we are talking about consensus in a in a multi agent systems, there's communication among the among the agents. This is uh, this P I J parameter here which is the, just the difference between the, the displacement on every agent. So the agent must uh, share information concerning their position. And okay. with that information and the dynamics, the internal dynamics of the, of the agents, they move collaboratively towards the global minimum. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Felipe, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your your presentation. Uh, in this Thank sense you. of uh, practical uh, scenario, uh, what would happen if the the source uh, presents noise? Presents what? Sorry. Uh, a kind of noise. Uh, if okay. you disturb. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. For this uh, work, we. We established that the, the source must be isotropic. Um, but in the case of noise, uh, we have uh, another work uh, in which the agents uh, are robust against um, match disturbances. Um, but uh, it's, we are still working on that. It's not that simple. So uh, for this case, we just simplify this, this approach. Uh, saying that there's no noise and, and the, the source is isotropic. That's why we, we, we say basic source estimation, mm -hmm. because yeah, mm -hmm. you, you may have many variables here. It's, it's, it's not a very simple um, problem, but we try to, to address it step by step. Uh, thank you. Th thanks for your question. Okay, thank you very much again. Uh, so it's time to move for the next presentation. And I think uh, this is for <clears throat> uh, Felipe Ramirez with the work and Your microphone is. Uh, off. Ah, thank you, thank you. Now Can you see okay. the presentation? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Felipe Ramirez Rosgado, and I will present the following uh, article titled Nick Escape Observer for a class of nonlinear system with time delay outputs. Uh, this work uh, has been uh, developed uh, between the 
eh, ese nivel, el Université de Caen eh, en France. Eh, So the outline of the presentation is the following. First, uh, a brief motivation of the of this work, then a problem statement, uh, the proper design, the simulation results, the conclusion, and the reference. So the motivation of, of this work is, uh, is based in fourth uh, age. So first, uh, in in the systems, not all variables can be me measured. So this could be uh, because the, the system uh, is not this, uh, then it uh, could be an invasive uh, instrumentation. So uh, it said that if you put a sensor in the system, the system will not work uh, in a good sense. Uh, and third, uh, the cost is really high. Really, really high. So, when 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 we put a, a sensor in in our system, it, in many cases it is said that the continuous measure is available. Since if you put a sensor, so one can consider that the measure is not in a continuous way. So. Uh, so in this sense, we can uh, present uh, two cases, a sample output or a sample uh, measure or a time delay measure. So in this work, uh, we consider that uh, the sample as a delay output. So we, uh, we consider that the system, the instrumented, the instrumented system presents uh, a sensor that uh, makes that the output presents a delay. So in this sense, we need to estimate the unavailable state and or in the, available, uh, the unavailable uh, signal. So this problem can, can be addressed as the following equation, the following system shown in equation one, where we present a nonlinear system where the available output presents a time delay. The states, uh, uh, the system state are the, the, denoted by X. The input of the system uh, is by denoted by U and is bound. The nonlinear vector function uh, P is triangular with respect to X, and the available output is a uh, delay. So uh, the time delay is known and is a positive, a positive constant. So. Uh, we need to reconstruct the unavailable uh, output and the state, uh, the vector state in a continuous uh, and pre delay case. Therefore, if we uh, consider this output, we reconstruct the system built in a, a delayed state, in, in a delayed form. So uh, we need to do something to reconstruct the uh, pre-delay system. So the matrix A is shown uh, like this form. The, in this sense, we consider a, 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 MIMO, a, MIMO, uh, a MIMO system, and we consider that the uh, nonlinear vector function is shown uh, like this. So, uh, the, the system uh, must be satisfied the following two assumptions. Uh, the first assumption is that the state and the input are bound. So X, uh, it's, it's a compact set, and U, uh, two. <clears throat> the second assumption is that each function uh, phi is leached with respect to X and uniform in U, like is shown in equation two. So uh, this is a Lipschitz constant of the function P. So in this sense, uh, we uh, consider the following uh, observer for reconstruct the uh, pre-delayed uh, state vector. We consider uh, the following observer shown in equation three, where it's a cascade observer 
it's a cascable server since uh, it presents a, an observer in the base and the rest of the elements of the, of the cascade are a predictor. So the base observer is denoted by the uh, base uh, equal to zero, and it's a high gain observer that this high gain observer uh, estimate the delay state vector. So this, uh, this delay state vector, uh, uh, it's fit to the predictor and the predictors would the, the last predictor of the, of the cascade would uh, estimate the pre-delay uh, state vector of the system. So uh, what's the main, uh, the main uh, approach of the main uh, contribution of this work is the structure of the cascade. This cascade is uh, like, like show here, is uh, present a term uh, theta and a term uh, lambda that is a, and the correction term is dynamic. It, it, it's contracts to uh, what it's proposed in the, in, the, in the state of the art. So the notation for the cascade are, the, are shown in equation four and the rotation term in the cascade are show, is shown in equation five. So uh, with this, uh, one can propose the following term. So now considering the system one that satisfied the assumption one and two, and with the system three, then uh, for all uh, theta greater to theta zero, greater to zero. Uh, and if the maximum time delay in each predictor uh, satisfies the following inequality uh, shown in equations uh, six, the observation error will convert exponentially uh, to zero when time goes to empty. So this, uh, this uh, disequality uh, must be satisfied for each predictor. So uh, here one can uh, see the uh, cascade observer diagram where we have the, uh, the, non, the nonlinear system the unviable output is denoted by J. And then for the measure, for the instrumentation uh, process, we have the available output that is uh, uh, in a time delay. So we need to uh, reconstruct the uh, unavailable output and is in the same way the uh, state vector in a free time. But if we consider a, a high gain observer in a simple case, we only con we only get the uh, state delay uh, vector. Therefore, uh, with the proposed uh, cascade observer, we, uh, we can estimate the uh, unavailable output and the state, the free delay state vector. So the base observer is a health gain observer uh, uh, normally, and then the predictor of the cascade have this form where uh, each predictor uh, is compensed compens in a horizon equal to tau sub m uh, the, the, the time delay. So now uh, the proof of the theorem one is show uh, as follows. Now considering uh, the following models evaluated at different time intervals as shown in equation seven, and now considering that uh, the observation error uh, as uh, tal the x uh, and set the exponential error as bar x, one obtains the following in the equation A, where uh, g is a dynamic function, and in this sense, uh, one consider uh, its derivative as uh, in the equation uh, so, uh, by writing and subtracting this term, one consider uh, one obtain the uh, equation 10, and then it's important to uh, clarify that uh, bar A is a Hurwitz matrix since uh, lambda must be greater than zero. So, now uh, the function zeta is defined as follows in equation 11. 
and now considering the Lyapunov uh, function uh, B, one gets for uh, zero greater to zero, one, con one gets the equation 12. So now con uh, choosing Terra such that uh, this uh, inequality follows, uh, the inequality 12 becomes as a uh, 13, and then uh, evaluating the uh, auxiliary function zero, one consider one gets the 14. Now uh, this uh, this function is in order to uh, to compensate and relation sorry uh, uh, to relation it each predictor uh, to each predictor. So now obtaining the norm, the norm of uh, Sarah, uh, one gets uh, 15, and uh, by using uh, 14 and 15, uh, it leads to uh, 16. Where uh, now, considering the lemma proposed in Hernandez Gonzalez uh, et al., one gets the equation uh, 17. And now, where in this sense, we consider that uh, coming back to turn of errors, one gets that the error would be bone, uh, would be expert, will convert expression to zero, but the, 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 the rate of conversion would be given by this term uh, era theta, that this term era theta is uh, relationed <coughs> to the uh, uh, to the uh, prediction horizon. Now uh, we we have the following uh, simulation results. When we have this, uh, we have uh, we consider the robotic arm proposed in Farsa uh, et al. Where uh, one gets this uh, follow, the, the following nonlinear system given by uh, this form, when uh, we have the first output delayed, <coughs> we consider that uh, this output presents a time delay equal to dot uh, one second, and for this simulation, we consider that the uh, we have three, pre three predictors and a value of theta of uh, 115, and the matrix K uh, is uh, given by this. And for the simulation, we have a uh, set lambda equal to two. So in this uh, form, we have uh, this, uh, the figure trees, uh, three uh, shows the comparison of the uh, of the output and the output estimated by the last predictor in the cascade, where uh, in this sense uh, one can achieve the uh, observation objective that is to estimate uh, the free delay uh, output. Uh, the second state is shown in Figure four. And the three state is shown in figure five, and the fourth state is shown in figure six. So it's important to emphasize that if we consider some uh, uh, a high gain uh, observer, we uh, estimate the uh, the layered uh, system. So we cannot reconstruct the free delay system. And especially, especially in this, uh, in this uh, system that is a uh, observer by uh, observer control uh, system, uh, we cannot uh, control the system with the presence of the time delay. <clears throat> so uh, in this sense, we have a comparison between the standard structure of the, of the cascade where is shown in equation uh, 19 and the proposed where uh, in this sense we have a, a ordinary uh, dynamic equ equation uh, of g where g is a, a of of the compensation of the compensation 
function for the time delay. So what happened? So in this uh, figure, it show. In this comparison, we set the we put uh, on test the same uh, system, but we compare the equation, the observer, the the cascade uh, observer proposed in 19 uh, in the equation 19 versus the proposing in uh, 20. So this is the observation error north where. Uh, the standard uh, approach is uh, shown as a black line where we present, uh, we can see that it presents a higher uh, values of the, of the error. And in our case, we have uh, the dotted rate where we have uh, lower values. So this can be reduced using an uh, the term lambda. So with this term lambda, we can uh, adjust the convergence and the uh, the convergence of the uh, predictor. So if this is an extra uh, degree of freedom in or uh, observer that this in uh, equation 19 is no uh, percent. So the conclusion of this work are the following. Uh, a new cascade observer structure for a class of nonlinear system will obtain the light output is presented. A new correction term is designed for the predictor. The extra term allows to adjust the converge uh, and present a smoother converse. And the, the continuous uh, state vector is estimated. And for further work, we'll consider asynchronous sample intervals in the output. So uh, this further work would be when we have a nonlinear system, but uh, we have a sampling and a time delay. So the reference uh, use are the following, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Felipe, for your presentation. Now it's time for questions. Someone has a question. Please go ahead. No one question. I have one question. Go ahead, please. Felipe, uh, in, the, in this class of nonlinear systems with your uh, observer, uh, how do you replace the separation principle? Because you have the nonlinearity. What kind of nonlinearities? Uh, are admissible for to guarantee the stability in your cascade scheme. scheme. Uh, uh, so for this, uh, for this, uh, for this kind of of of, of system, we consider that the nonlinear uh, the nonlinear function are Lipschitz. So uh, this uh, can be uh, shown in uh, assumption two. We can consider uh, nonlinear nonlinearities where uh, it are discontinuous. So, uh, in this sense, uh, I I I I didn't taste the the observer, but I I think it's not not would uh, it not present the the Lipschitz function. So, the 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 nonlinearities would be Lipschitz. In, in your simulation example, uh, you have a, a, a nonlinearity which is a, a dominantly linear, and the only nonlinear term is, is one cosine of x, uh, I think. But this is a bounded uh, function. Uh, what would happen if your excitation frequency of the cosine term uh, will, will be close to some resonance of the linear system? Or, or so on. Uh, have you think about that? Uh, uh, that part? Well, because it, 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 you can be, this, this function can be bounded easily, but in terms of the excitation frequency, you can go to, you can destroy the stability. Uh, 
thank you. That's a good question. Uh, I didn't, I didn't make the, I didn't make the simulation considering a, a other, other system. But I think uh, if, if, uh, if we have, a, if the, the, the nonlinearity uh, satisfies the function of the. Uh, the Lipschitz function could be a, a good performance, but in this sense, when we have a, a tough case, we can uh, adjust the maybe in a maybe thought to the system with the term of theta because a uh, theta can uh, can. Uh, can affect the rate of convergence uh, of the observer and maybe could be a uh, helps to the to the convergence. OK, thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Felipe, for the presentation and the and the answers. So uh, now we are moving for the last presentation of the session. And this is for uh, Andrei Markov and Sergei Dukanov. Hello, Go ahead, please. Okay. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Andre Markov. I'm presenting a quantum kinematic observer using multiple camp error with my co author, Sergei Drakonov. We are from the Cambridge Journal of the Universe. So, again, recall for a classic example of Hamlin UC filter um, got a system observation, system of, um, estimator. Ricard equation with uh, uh, expectation dynamics that gives um, that is resolved with this um, game, the PC transpose R inverse. We'll use similar logic once we uh, set up our observer. So, <clears throat> quaternions, they're the earliest con uh, construction of hypercomplex numbers. They were discovered by William Rowan Hamilton. When he was trying to describe three dimensional rotations similar to the way um, complex numbers describe two dimensional rotations, um, a simple three dimensional construction like complex numbers did not work. Um, and it, any construction with just multiplication did not work. What happened, what turned out work, to work, was a four dimensional construction that used um, conjug a conjugation operation in order to achieve the three-dimensional rotation um, on, on the subspace. <clears throat> the, generally, we use a unit quaternion to describe this rotation. However, this will, um, this will be different within, uh, within this work. And uh, yes, we do use the Hamilton uh, convention because there are, there are multiples uh, in, in this work. Uh, right, uh, quickly going through this general form is uh, with these real coefficients and three separate square roots of minus one with this multiplication law, I squared J, A equals J, equals J squared equals K squared is about IJK equals minus one, not commutative by K, IJ is equal to K, but JI is equal to minus K. Um, this conjugate that's uh, analogous to complex numbers, you just re reverse the reverse the sign of the uh, Coefficients in front of the square roots of minus one is an exponential form. Um, again, analogous to complex numbers. And then the three dimensional rotations are represented with this sort of conjugation operation, where on one side you multiply with, with a quaternion, on, with a unit quaternion, on the other side you multiply by its conjugate. If the quaternion is not normalized, which again, um, some of them will be in this work, 
then instead of using the conjugate on the other side, you use the inverse. Um, this um, preserves the then preserves the norm of the um, of the three dimensional vector in the uh, in the middle. And uh, yes, well, where where we use um, this is on the next page. So this is a useful shorthand, which um, um, it's uh, it's a uh, sort of quick. Um, it's a compact computationally in a devoid scheme ball lock. Okay, and um, another thing we will um, call a purely imaginary quaternion a vector and a purely real quaternion a scalar. And I will be switching back and forth between um, uh, in notation as well um, between uh, three vectors and uh, purely imaginary quaternions and between. Um, just real scalars and purely real quaternions. And um, again, state estimation and control for using quaternions is common, in, for example, in space. Okay, so here's our system. Uh, our kinematic equation, uh, Q dot is one half Q omega observation. And here's the observer design. Note that here, this Li is also a quaternion, not a matrix. The notation is going to um, there's going to be different notation later on. It's going to be a script L, not, not this L. And um, our error is going to be Q star Q hat. Um, the system, the quaternion is going to remain normalized. The observer is not. So the error is also not going to remain normalized. So our, what, is our, what is our convergence goal in this case? It is to have this error uh, converge to a non-zero real scalar, or if you were to normalize the error, for it to converge to plus or minus one. Plus or minus does not matter because, again, of the conjugation operate, operation, the uh, D sign would appear twice. OK, so um, you just write the dynamics of the error this way, um, and we can Condense this into the dynamics of the error in terms of uh, so the um, error derivative in terms of the error itself inside these commutators with this multiplication times our gain. And this allows us to turn the, the commutators into uh, just vector multiplication. Here, the commutators themselves just become cross products. But we have to be careful here. They are cross products of the vector component, so the, cure, the, the imaginary component of the quaternion error um, with um, our omega and with our vi. And if we expand the multiplication, the quaternion multiplication times vi into uh, vector multiplication, we get um, a cross product with the um, vector component of the gain. Uh, quaternion, a um, simple scalar multiplication by the scalar component of the gain quaternion, and then a, there's a, also a dot product with the uh, vector component of the gain quaternion, which then allows us to split the um, scalar and the vector components of this derivative into these two equations right here, 15, 16. And our convergence goal, again, was to have um, the error converged to, to a scalar, a real scalar. What does that mean? We want to send the vector part of the um, of the error to zero. So we are looking here at 16. Now, um, let's take a, a candidate uh, Lyapunov function of the um, um, half the uh, square of the norm of the vector component of the error. Uh, and we use this this gain where it's it's it just has a real scalar uh, multiplication. We set up the cauchy schwarz inequality, and we have v dot is non-positive. But also, since this QB bar can only be equal to um, at most um, one of the vi, uh, this v dot has to be strictly negative everywhere. 
the um, uh, yes, right. So the VI must be strictly negative everywhere, and we we must have at least at least two VI in order to encode orientation. Um, because well, you'd have three, but then the only orientation there's no orientation um, preserving uh, uh, flips of if you if you only have two, so you just need two. Okay, and then um, we also analyze the how this observer behaves under under noises. You um, if we add these disturbances uh, d r d s that act like this, we instead with um, d r and d s i having uh, r and s i covariance matrices. We have um, we proceed as as exactly as before, uh, trying to um, we're, we're looking at the um, this time in differential form, the dynamics of the observer, and then we get the error dynamics. Except this time, instead of just commutators, we have um, one-sided multiplication. So in a certain, a certain sense, this makes um, this uh, this part asymmetric, which will make this uh, look less elegant than than the deterministic portion. Um, right, and we here we have again the gain influencing this commutator, the gain influencing this. Um, of course, the uh, the noise associated to the observation. Okay, we convert to vector multiplication like we did before, except this time. It's much more expansive. We have what we originally had, and then everything involving the noise. So all this, and then everything involving the noise. We um, again want to send QV bar to zero. Um, so again, to convert this into a matrix equation, uh, just set uh, chi a being the um, the pre-composition of um, of the cross product with um, the vector a, as as shown here, and then let script li be this um, expression here, chi minus chi lib plus i lis. Then what we have is these two equations, which is exactly the same thing as before, only condensed into this matrix form um, right here with the um, Cross products and dot products turned into these matrix equations. Now, um, what um, what we have, what do we have for our um, for our matrix equations for our corresponding matrix equations here? Um, if we let um, p scalar be the expectation of um, q, um, the scalar component of the the error squared. Uh, P vector being uh, expectation of QV bar, QS bar, and then um, P matrix being the QV bar, QV bar transposed. We have the following. Um, these are the dynamics of P scalar. Um, oh, oh, yes, also we have um, these uh, um, shorthands for these expressions, uh, the, the, the A's and B's that appear here. This is the scalar um, expectation dynamics. Over here are the vector expectation dynamics and the uh, matrix expectation dynamics. Again, this is the expectation uh, P is the expectation of um, A bar, Q A bar transposed. We wish to send that trace to zero. Now, um, the Optimal gain in the sense that it decreases this trace the most at each at each point in time is given through with this expression, where if we if we take the trace of this equation 31 and um, then take the gradient with respect to the um, to the uh, gain components, we get the following expression um, with these 
with all of this being in, within the in the inverse, this being um, this uh, multiplication times the vi here, and um, the c and the uh, the ci and the mi being these expressions up at the top. These are our um, these are our optimal gains in in this sense for the stochastic portion. Now um, we also have. A bit of a speculative diversion here. If we look at the behavior near convergence, then um, we can also, um, if we bound the distribution of this QB bar above by, um, you know, replacing this P by alpha I, where alpha is the maximum eigenvalue of P, we get this approximate gain. And then if we let the um, the noise be spherically symmetric, uh, we get that the um, this approximate gain is uh, is sort of in the form of, of what we have our own deterministic observer in that this is a um, this is a real scalar in terms of geon, but that's again just a sort of aside. Now um, here are uh, some simulations of the behavior under uh, of this estimator. Um, all of these run in MATLAB, and these are again spherical uh, spherically symmetric noises. Um, so. If you so, if we just set these um, these variances of uh, qr squared and then qsi squared, um, <laughs> here 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 are how the com components of this error behave. They go to the um, scalar component converges to a um, in this case to a positive um, positive um, number, and then the um, uh, vector components all go to zero. Here is what the underlying um, um, underlying system and um, observer looks like. Note that here the um, again because we broke convergence, the uh, observer does not converge to the system. It converges to a scalar factor of the system. If we insisted on converging on um, renormalizing at every step, we can have the uh, observer go to the uh, exact uh, system, which again we we did not have to do because of the uh, the uh, inverse of the conjugation. And here's some more um, examples. This time with uh, half the variances. This time with a larger um, variance here of 0.2. We can see the residual um, effects of the noise around the um, for the vector component. And uh, if we again if we do um, Insist on renormalizing the simulation at every step. Um, here we have the uh, scalar component just go to one. Okay, and um, here are our uh, references. Thank you very much. That'll be it. Still connection? Questions? Is there any, any question for for people there in bits? Sorry, I had problems with my my microphone. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. If uh, there are some questions, it's it's time now. Yes, go ahead, uh, please. First of all, what, what is the main advantage to use the multiplicative error with respect to the other scheme? This okay. That is that is something we we have have yet to do because we are we're still looking at what the um the the for example the bounds of convergence are the um in terms of the uh, components of the game or in terms of the uh, the noise covariances and so that's that's yet to be done. Right. The other is uh, because uh, of the main fact that the quarter mapics in the observer. Uh, uh, what is the what are you pursuing? It is for any specific applications? Well, um, the one the one mentioned uh, the one that, that uh, was uh, you could you could use you know orientation to like yeah perhaps it's, it's, it's more something like that. Uh, 
is 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 more appropriate for analytics, robotics, and so on. Yes. Yes. Questions. Okay, thank you very much. If there are some other questions, but I have a question. What about the initial conditions? Uh, um, do you have some uh, sure. text about that? For the okay, so uh, for the observer in the simulations, we had um, uh, they were actually set randomly. Um, the um, you could. Uh, yeah, in the, in the simulations, they're actually set randomly. So that's also, I guess, a way of looking at what uh, would behave under disturbance. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, another question, the last question. Yes, yes please go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm from communication, so I encounter this not my, mm -hmm. my principal area, but it, why why the, the vector has to converge to zero? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Because um the multiplicative error in order for the um for the system and the state to encode the same, but let's say orientation, mm -hmm. right? Um then we'd have um we would have to have the inverse or the inverse of one times the other be um if if normalized one or minus one. But here, just uh, because it breaks uh, normalization, we we just want it to be anything that's that just it converges it converges to any flat value that's not um, that's not zero, and so um, if uh, so, in, in, for example, if you use a, a subtractive error, you, you want it to converge to zero, it, that that way you, you get the state of the estimator to be the same. But here, the um, the state of the estimator in they're not the same, but they encode the same again orientation, um, just um, by having the um, everything that's not the the scalar component of that error go to zero. So, does that does that answer? It? Yes. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this was the last presentation of the session. Thank you, you all, for the presence, the questions, the answer. And uh, have Thank a nice you. afternoon. A nice one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, clap clap. Thank you, Salvador. Thank you. 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 Thank